Is that you? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so basically, like I said, today, you guys have already done this. You need to make sure the whole back is done on your simulation. Um, you are inputting stuff into Schoology, which means that these two columns, technically, you could get away with but you won't get full credit because then I'll see this page and you won't, you know, so you, you should do this one. Um, I gave you this whole example yesterday, so just a reminder what it consisted of. You have to draw your model, so whatever's on your computer screen. Then you have to say the shape of it. So um, when you guys were on your Schoology screen, okay, uh, you had... The FET simulation link is right there. Make sure you're using that. Okay. Once you're in the FET simulation, the whole backside is based off of the one that says real. Let me see if it shows that. There it is, real molecules. So we would click on that. And then you can kind of look through this. Your drop down is right here. You have show bond angles, make sure that box is checked, make sure molecule geometry is checked. So for this first one, for water, we have bent, so that went right there in that second column, right? So after we drew it, we wrote bent. Then this bond polarity, just a reminder, came from your electronegativity values that are on your um, little resource page that you have on your desk, right? Um, or if you don't have that, then you can look it up online. Right? You have electronegativity value. So we had oxygen was 3.5, hydrogen was 2.1. So we went ahead and subtracted them to get the number 1.4. This column, we had to look at where it fell on our scale. So we made this scale yesterday. 0 to 0 0.3 was nonpolar. 0 0.4 to 1.7 was polar. And then above that would be ionic. So 1.4 fell into this spot right here, which is polar. So we put polar. This part, we're now looking at that little half sheet of notes that you guys took yesterday. So you should have that half sheet out to help you. Um, we have this little half sheet. On here, we described when things are polar or nonpolar, if they're always polar or not. Okay? So for bent, we would look at bent. This one is always polar. So we put polar, and then the angle came straight from our... Um, simulation and it was right there so 104.5 all right so that's what you were doing the whole way down so you need to have this done first okay then when you flip it over the post lab questions this is the part that I need to help you with so everyone needs to watch this part everyone okay so when you go to do this shape okay well first of all let's let's start here formula and name so I gave you ni3 for this first one I want you to name it that means that you are using prefixes prefixes Okay, so with the naming, remember the prefixes are on your resource page. They were up here in the top right. So we would look up what the prefixes are and put those where they need to go. They represent what these little numbers are. So if I only have one nitrogen, remember we don't put mono on first one. We would have originally put mono, mono nitrogen. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and leave the mono off. If you want to write it just to help yourself out, you can. So mono nitrogen. And we're going to cross out the mono because we don't need it. Don't ever write mono in the first. So nitrogen, and then we have three iodines. So we're going to say tri-iodide. Okay? Tri-iodide. If you say tri-iodine, it's okay. You just need to get better at putting ide. You want to finish in ides on your last thing. All right, so now that I have the name of this um, compound, then I go to the next one. I need the shape and a drawing. This drawing is a Lewis structure, not the model, because you have to still know how to draw it with all the dots and connect the single dots, all right? So if you already drew it with just the models, I would just get another piece of paper, draw it again, especially if you did it with pen or whatever, um, unless you can fit it in over here on the side. So for this one, nitrogen, I'm looking at my periodic table. Nitrogen is in group 15, which is five valence electrons. So with those five valence electrons, we go one, two, three, four, five. Then I know that I have three iodines. So I'm just going to draw one iodine so I know where I'm going. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because it's in group 17. Here what I'm seeing is single dot to single dot. So what that tells me is that I'm going to have an iodine 
drawn three times, and I'm going to be connecting it to a single dot. So I'm going to go backwards on this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to connect those two. And that's kind of what we have. Now, when we have to figure out the shape, it's challenging because I know you guys are still learning how to draw these somewhat um, to kind of see these shapes. So what you want to rely on, and this will help you, is on that little half sheet page. The first thing that it starts with is telling you how many atoms present. So this one only has two. This one has three, three, and then it goes to four, four, and then five. So looking at this picture, I have one, two, three, four. I have four things. So I'm going to look down my little list to where I see four. So there's two options. I have trigonal planar and I have trigonal pyramidal. What is the difference between these two? One has a lone pair and the other one doesn't. Ours has a lone pair on the center, right? Since there's a lone pair, that means it's going to be trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so once again, you're using these notes very carefully. Look at those numbers. It kind of helps you um, get down to which ones you're paying attention to, right? And then it's always a difference of a lone pair. Um, polar or nonpolar? So we look at our notes, trigonal pyramidal, always polar. So we're going to go ahead and write polar, and that's what you have. Okay. The model, yeah. So just do me a favor and put the letters next to those and then put the dots. Okay? All right. So that's kind of, that's what you're doing on the back right here. Um, just a heads up, um, just to give you a couple hints on, um, on this one, I would make sure you have S drawn like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't turn it. Okay, after you've connected, don't turn it. And it kind of helps you see what the shape actually is. So some people have been putting the, the lone pairs on opposite ends and it, they're thinking it's a shape and it's not, it's something different. So just uh, if you draw your S like that, it might help. The other one is this CS2. Know that there are double bonds. There are double bonds. Okay, and that should help with that one too. All right. Um... I think that's all I got. Okay. This last one. Oh, yeah. That one I can help you with the name. So for this one, we would say carbon, because there's only one, monohydrogen. And then what would we say for the last part? Tri. Tri. Yep. Tri bromide. Yep. All right. Cool. So hopefully um, that'll get you kind of started on that. Um, and like I said, as soon as you're done with your page, you do want to open up the part that was on um, Schoology. Let me get that up real quick again. So for Schoology, you should see it when you're on your screen and you're just on the normal screen or whatever. You'll be able to see off here on the right-hand side, it's a little assignment. It says it's due tonight, um, which I'm probably going to stick with, but uh, I might extend it to tomorrow. But you do want to try to aim for that, okay? So you, if you open this up, that'll take you to your assignment, and what you'll see is that it's going to ask you for basically all of the same questions that were on the page. And then that way you'll get a, a chance to get what the answers that were wrong. You'll get to see those, okay? All right, so um, that's what we're working on right now. Feel free to work with your partner again, okay? Get yourself through this, and then I'm going to come bug a few of you guys right now, okay?